Well, I found that the symptoms of PCOS can be controlled for a large majority of my patients. Every patient has different symptomatology from PCOS. So one of the important things is to understand which symptoms are they troubled by and where are they in the lifespan in terms of their fertility. Are they trying to get pregnant or are they not trying to get pregnant? Because that may direct what we use in our armamentarium to combat the symptoms of PCOS. I think one of the best things is once you've been given a diagnosis of PCOS, you now know your enemy and you know what you're up against. And we have to devise strategies to help treat the problems that they're experiencing. Take, for example, hair growth. Many women with PCOS have excessive hair growth. Sometimes it's on the lip or chin. Sometimes it's on other body parts. And while we can use mechanical treatments to get rid of the hair, laser therapy works well for certain ethnicities, we also will oftentimes use hormonal treatments to help balance the hormones, stabilize them, so that the hair growth can be less. This may take time. For a woman who's not trying to get pregnant, birth control pills may be the best treatment. There are also dermatologic agents and creams that can help as well. But for a woman who's trying to get pregnant, we oftentimes can't use some of these dermatologic agents, and we certainly wouldn't want to use birth control, so we have to treat hair growth in a different way. Same goes for acne. That can be quite a common problem for women with polycystic ovarian syndrome. Again, acne, if you're not trying to get pregnant, birth control pills work quite well. And of course, there's cosmetics that can do a good job for many women. However, when trying to get pregnant, that's just another burden. And many times we have to look to more delicate balance of the hormones and treating it cosmetically. Some of the other symptoms of PCOS that women experience are obesity. Now, not everyone who has PCOS is obese. There is a term that's often used called skinny PCOS or the lean variant. But for many women who have the symptom of obesity with PCOS, it's important to understand how to combat that for them. It's not just about calorie counting. For women with PCOS, we oftentimes have to educate them about the right type of diet to help control their obesity. They also need to use exercise. And it's not fair. They can sit right next to their friend who's not been diagnosed with PCOS, eat the exact same meal, and they can gain weight while their friend can lose weight. But again, knowing your enemy and knowing how to fight it is the most important thing they can do with the diagnosis of PCOS. Well, insulin resistance is crucial to understand to really know more about how to treat polycystic ovarian syndrome. Insulin resistance is really manifest in two ways, and it serves as the main driver for some of the symptoms that we see in polycystic ovarian syndrome. So insulin resistance exists when we have elevated insulin in the bloodstream with cells not responding appropriately. So there's a very delicate balance between glucose and insulin, and that gives us the energy to function in day-to-day -day life. But if we have too much glucose that's not being corralled into the blood cells, or too much insulin that's trying to do the job of corralling but not being very efficient, we then have excessive hormones floating through the bloodstream. These hormones then go and act on every cell in the body, from the pancreas to the liver to the hair and especially to the ovaries, and cause some of the problems we see with women who are trying to conceive with PCOS. Hormones can be stabilized in a number of different ways depending on what your ultimate goals are. If you're trying to get pregnant, oftentimes we'll want to create a proper balance of ovulatory hormones and then luteal support hormones. And that can be quite beneficial for some of the symptoms that women experience with polycystic ovarian syndrome. So the hormone treatment may actually improve the balance of hormones. There are other ways to stabilize the hormones as well. And that may include a proper diet, low carbohydrate diet. Uh, that also may include exercise, that may include smaller, more frequent meals throughout the day so that there's not as much ups and downs in the bloodstream. These are different ways to stabilize the hormones. There's a couple other strategies we can use to stabilize hormones in women with polycystic ovarian syndrome. There can be some herbal supplements, such as cinnamon. Sometimes things such as acupuncture will help stabilize those hormones. But we've also found that some medications, such as metformin, may do a very good job of helping women combat some of the symptoms. Now, oftentimes with metformin, women will take a pill, 
either nightly or a couple times during the day, which will help their body regulate the glucose insulin balance that we see in the bloodstream. There can be some side effects of metformin though, so not everyone is a good candidate for this. Some of the side effects include stomach discomfort, diarrhea, gas, but oftentimes if women are patient and work with their doctor, they'll find a good balance of a dose of medication that they can tolerate. Well, once we've made the diagnosis of PCOS, there's a certain path we'll often go down in order to help women achieve a family. Usually this will start with diet and exercise. Sometimes we'll lay on top of that some extra medication, maybe medication to help them ovulate, such as Clomid, or even metformin to help them balance the insulin glucose in their bloodstream. But then if that hasn't worked, we'll often move on to more aggressive treatments, such as gonadotropins, which will help them ovulate. For many women, this is very successful. Once we get them to ovulate, they can conceive, carry a pregnancy, and have the family of their dreams. But not for everyone. Some women will have to go on to more aggressive treatment, such as in vitro fertilization. In vitro fertilization is used to harvest the eggs in a safer context when we won't have to worry about multiple pregnancies. And in that context, we can then fertilize the eggs, transfer embryos back into their uterus to help them have a safe pregnancy and be assured that an embryo that's healthy has made it into the right place. This, of course, is very successful for women if they need to use this technology. For women who have been diagnosed with PCOS, they should not despair. They should realize that we have very good treatment options for them. They should talk to a reproductive endocrinologist, understand what they can do to help themselves and what we can do as a profession to help them. And they should realize that even while they may be aging, that in truth, oftentimes their disease is improving and allowing them to have a healthy family.